And now we're going to talk about signs of ovulation and fertility awareness. The first thing we're going to talk about is cervical mucus. So close to ovulation, for those of you who are ovulating, you may notice that when you use the bathroom and you wipe, that it's a little gooey. Yes, that's your cervical mucus. That's the, what we're going to be talking about. It's thin, it's watery, and it's stringy. It's kind of a stretchy, stringy type of thing. There'll be a large amount compared to other times of the month of your monthly cycle. It'll be clear like raw egg whites and it'll have a, what's called spin bar heat. So that means how stretchy, stringy, and elastic the mucus is. So what I'm gonna do is show you stretchy, stringy with, yes, an egg white. So, stretchy, stringy, egg white. That's what we're talking about. I know you're never going to want to eat eggs again, or you might, I don't know. Post ovulation, so after ovulation, the cervical mu mucus will be thick, tacky, and sticky. There'll be a smaller amount. It'll be white, like regular white, not clear like we just saw. It'll be white, and it blocks the cervix because it's hostile to penetration by sperm. So it makes it difficult for the sperm to swim through. The reason I even talk about fertility awareness is because 93% of women can learn how to tell they're ovulating by these signs that we're talking about. So cervical mucus is one of them. And in this country, Many of us have access to healthcare, contraception. Some of us don't. In other countries, other parts of the world, there are many people who don't have access to contraceptive measures. So knowing fertility when a woman's body is fertile is really significant. And cervical mucus is one of the most significant things. It lets us know, yes, she's ovulating. Another thing that we can talk about is ferning. Uh, ferning is when you are at your house and you put your cervical mucus on your microscope slide and you put it under your microscope and you look at it and it'll actually show a ferning pattern. And I'm sure you all have microscopes at your house or maybe a doctor or nurse practitioner, midwife type person might be doing that. And it shows that ovulation is happening. Another thing is vaginal pH. The vagina is more alkaline at ovulation. Uh, that means sperm can move faster in an alkaline environment. The cervix is softer and it's slightly more opened and it rises up in the vagina a bit. Another thing is basal body temperature. You've heard of people talking, taking their temperature to help predict when it's the best time to have sex or not in order to conceive a child or not. So this is what we're talking about, is basal body temperature. So basal, what does basal mean? Basal means at rest. So when she's resting, first thing in the morning, what she'll do is take her temperature. So that does not mean get up, go to the bathroom, find a thermometer, take her temp. No, it means she's in bed, she reaches over to her nightstand, gets her thermometer, and takes her temp. As much at rest as she possibly can. There are special thermometers. You can get them at drugstores and Target, Walmart, those kinds of places. They don't cost very much. They're usually maybe 15-ish dollars. They come with graph paper. 
so that she can graph her temperature along with other things like cervical mucus and a few other things we're going to talk about. So basal body temp, she needs to take her temp at the same time every day before getting out of bed. For some of us, that's going to work just fine. For those of us who work swing shifts, maybe you're doing different kinds of shifts within a week or two or a month, it's going to kind of skew what your temperature will be. So that's one of the disadvantages. Uh, she'll chart at least three months, three to six months, to see a pattern. As long as she can see this is the pattern that I have. I usually get the spike in the temp on day 12, and then I get the decrease on day 13. If it's a day before or a day after, we consider that a fairly regular cycle, and that's fine. It's just enough to give her an idea of this is what I'm probably ovulating, along with her cervical mucus and other signs. So you notice on the graph, she marked coitus, and that always makes me think of Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. So whenever she's having intercourse, she marked that. And you can see that she marked on her graph when she had coitus, when she um, took her temp and what the temperature was. So how does basal body temp work? It works because at about 24 to 36 hours before ovulation, there's a slight and sudden drop in the basal body temp, as you can see on the graph. And then that's about 0.4 to a 0.8 degree Fahrenheit decrease. It's immediately followed by a rise in the temp of 0.5 to 1 degree. The temperature increase indicates that progesterone has been released, which is um, what's called thermogenic, and that's what makes your body temperature increase. So this rise signals that ovulation has occurred within a day or two. So looking at this along with cervical mucus and other things, it's going to help her determine when is her fertile day, when are her fertile days. Okay, things that affect basal body temp would be lack of sleep like we've already spoken about, that if you're doing swing shifts, if you went to bed late, if you got up way early, if you didn't sleep well through the night, for whatever reason, that's going to affect your basal body temp. Illness, of course, if there's an infection that causes a fever, that's going to affect her temperature. Drinking alcohol increases body temp. Um, an electric blanket or waterbed because the temperature of those things can be adjusted. Uh, it it's, may skew what we're getting for results for the temperature. So other things that indicate she is ovulating would be middle schmerz, and this literally means middle pain. Middle meaning the middle of the month meaning ovulation. We pretty much associate the middle of the month-ish with ovulation. So middle schmerz means there's pelvic pain either on the right side or the left side of her pelvis at the middle of the month while she is ovulating near that time. It can last for a few hours to a couple of days. Um, about one in five women notice this, so some people notice it, some don't. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable, sometimes it's just a little twinge. This is due to the stretching and rupturing of the follicle and spilling of the follicular fluid and blood into the peritoneal cavity. Along with that is mid-cycle spotting. Same thing, it's the follicle opening up and maybe there's a little bit of blood that comes and so she may notice 
mid-cycle spotting. Some people have that, some don't. Another thing is breast tenderness. After ovulation or right around ovulation time, many women feel some tenderness in their breasts. And lastly, there are ovulation predictor tests. I don't know how much they cost nowadays, but usually there's two or three per pack. Get them at a drugstore or Walmart or Target, those kinds of places would all have them. It detects the sudden surge of LH, luteinizing hormone. Um, it can be done with urine, or there are some that are done with saliva that a woman just licks. Um, so either way, chem lab in the bathroom or wherever. Um, and it will tell getting closer to ovulation, getting closer, ovulating has happened. So it kind of gives another piece of the puzzle as to when ovulation is happening. So all of those things we've just talked about indicate she is near ovulation. 